Here is uh, Mr. Bill Casera on alternate, alternate revenue income tax. Yes. Good evening, uh, Mayor and members of uh, City Council. Okay. So, uh, at the last meeting, uh, you heard a uh, presentation by the uh, Beaver Creek Fair Funding Committee, and. Uh, for the past I have several years there, it's actually been 18 months, I was corrected on that. Uh, the uh, group has been meeting to uh, discuss alternative revenue sources for the city. Uh, the group uh, had a lot of variables out there. They uh, narrowed down uh, their proposals and finalized what they believe is their solution and presented it to city council at the last meeting. Uh, the foundation of their solution really was the uh, proposal of an earnings tax for every person residing or earning and receiving income within the city limits. Uh, their proposal included a uh, tax rate of 1% and I wanted to ensure that the 100% credit for residents uh, paying earned income to other municipalities was uh, in place and that uh, their solution also provided the uh, exclusion of uh, certain taxes and earnings including uh, retirement income, social security, pensions, annuities, active military uh, duty uh, pay and other tax exempt income. Uh, the proposal also included uh, an immediate uh, rollback of the uh, 3.4 mil uh, levy that expires in 2021, assuming that this would uh, be up in place in January of 2022. And uh, so therefore, uh, they could immediately uh, reduce the uh, property taxes as part of this program. So again, the goal of the group was uh, to distribute the funding of city services and infrastructure improvements between residents and non-residents. That's uh, the underlying theme here of uh, diversifying the uh, tax base and uh, getting uh, folks to uh, pay for both the services they use and the infrastructure they use. And again, to uh, get us away from being property tax dependent and to uh, split that uh, between earned income tax and a uh, property taxes, which basically is what everybody in Ohio has. And also provide the uh, residents of uh, some tax relief now and in the future of property taxes. Again, a major goal of theirs and again, uh, generate revenue to maintain, expand our uh, municipal services and also address the uh, backlog of uh, uh, infrastructure and capital improvements and maintenance projects that uh, have been postponed because of the way our current tax structure is. So under the property tax structure, again, it's uh, hard to get to uh, uh, some of those uh, backlogged uh, projects. I threw this in here because this was uh, basically our, the city's long-term financial strategy We've discussed this probably three or four times for some of the uh, council, new me council members. Again, we're trying to stabilize our revenue base uh, first with property tax initiatives. We've done that successfully over the uh, past three or four uh, levy cycles and making those uh, property taxes continuous to, to uh, diversify our revenue sources just like their goal and again to determine some sort of long-term plan to address the uh, current operations and capital uh, infrastructure needs that we have on the books. Again, just a quick review. This was the uh, time frame that we were looking at, the timeline. Uh, you can see that after we had passed the uh, last two uh, renewals for the uh, street capital improvement program, the 2 mil and the uh, 0 0.9 with a additional 0 0.3 uh, park millage. Uh, we had what we thought was a open time frame and op open opportunity to come up with alternative revenue sources. And, and again, uh, then with looming in the uh, future, the 3.4 mil street operations is renewal levy that would, uh, is out there that um, we could address that before that took place or after that took place. But that was kind of our strategy was to look at those open time frames to determine when uh, would be an opportune time to bring forward an alternative revenue uh, solution. 
Again, our solution centered around uh, doing an income tax. Uh, even uh, before the group came forward, we were looking at this, and then you do the alternative tax with the income tax, or you continue the uh, levy uh, cycle that we have already on the books. And as you can see, we have the 3.4 mil uh, in 2021. We also have some uh, new uh, levies that would be coming forward to, again, assist with operations to keep up with the uh, current service standards and to develop a uh, infrastructure program to address some of the uh, backlog. But again, the, the levy options, the property tax options, you can see, even though we've uh, projected fairly minor increases, that cycle may continue every three or five years. So again, that's the property tax cycle that we were on and again that we're trying to resolve. So. So the question came up was, is the uh, Beaver Creek uh, Fair Funding Committee in line and uh, with the uh, city goals and objectives? And as you can see that uh, we've met with them several times and gone over their proposals uh, and we've looked at it and we do feel that uh, the, uh, uh, the objectives of the BFFC are in line with our long-term uh, financial strategies and again, that fit into our timeline. Uh, we also feel that uh, the assumptions that they made uh, during their presentation and their solutions uh, were a fair representation of the resources that could be generated and in particular the savings that would be generated uh, through uh, elimination of, of the property taxes uh, when they expire and the future ones that you just saw in the past slide that will be coming down the road eventually. So again, uh, the goals and the strategy of all these, and again, when they emerge all together, they're fairly close. Again, the key here is to reduce the city's property tax dependence uh, as a revenue source. And again, this could be accomplished by having the uh, earnings tax on the uh, November ballot and with a January 1st, uh, 2022 implementation date, the uh, 3.4 mil street levy would expire in 2021. So that goes in line with uh, the process of replacing one uh, tax uh, source with another. Uh, again, the other key to this is uh, reducing the future property tax initiatives. You saw from the list that there's four or five other property tax initiatives that will have to come forward if the alternative income tax doesn't come forward and, and again, uh, we're, we're trying to uh, eliminate that uh, property tax and that uh, uh, hamster wheel that we've been on with property taxes to uh, eliminate our dependence on property taxes and, and come up with an alternative source. And then again, uh, this would provide us with the initiative to uh, address the backlog of uh, the postponed capital infrastructure needs that we've obviously postponed because of our current property tax structure and then uh, relieve the burden of the residents paying 100% of the city operations and capital. And the key here is requiring the non-residents to pay their fair share of the services and infrastructure costs that uh, uh, they benefit from. And again, we've kind of always had a uh, estimate out there that 75% of the workforce uh, in Beaver Creek are non-residents. So again, uh, diverting some of the uh, the responsibility of that revenue generation to the non-residents, which again, rightly use our services and our infrastructure. So again, the key here would be that uh, we would uh, implement an alternative revenue source, the income tax, and we would, first thing out of the bat, we would exempt retirement income. Uh, that's uh, allowable in the uh, ORC, and we think that uh, that will uh, assist uh, current and future operations. Again, maintaining the 100% credit for the residents working in other taxing districts. So again, there will be no tax, additional tax burden on those residents that are currently working elsewhere. Uh, reduce the inequity of the residents subsidize, subsidizing the surrounding tax authorities who receive our income that's generated within the city. Again, that's, it's another big one out there that uh, the other municipalities around us where our residents are working are benefited from us not having an income tax and we are basically 
handing money over to them. They're enjoying, you know, the improvements of their services and infrastructure. But uh, those folks that are coming into the city are not helping to pay for ours. So it eliminates that inequity and then uh, provides it for an immediate, as we talked about, a immediate uh, tax reduction for the residents and businesses for the implementation of the tax by having the property tax expire in 2021. So just, those a lot of words, but to give you the visual, right now our current property tax method uh, residents pay 100% of the revenue generated in the city. When we uh, go to the uh, proposed method of uh, using a uh, earnings tax and the 1% that was indicated before, uh, the non-residents would be paying 60%, 40%. I, again, that's based on the dollar amounts that they would generate, not really the 75% we talked about before. but. We've uh, conservatively estimated what that revenue would generate. And then the key there is, is that after you combine those two uh, methods, then the uh, property tax now uh, uh, come rolling off the, uh, the, the total tax bill for the city, uh, residents and non-residents would be split between 66% uh, residents and 33% non-residents. So again, that includes the 3.4 mill street levy rolling off. So again, changing the general philosophy of how we get that revenue generated by the uh, folks that are uh, working and living here and how that allocates it out to the uh, uh, groups involved in paying that income tax. So that being said, if, uh, and again, we just want to go on uh, the record and say that uh, both the uh, objectives of the BFFC and the city, as you just saw, are in line. Uh, we believe that's a, a good alternative proposal. We also believe that it fits within that time frame that we had for our strategic plan. And uh, if uh, that was the desire of council, here's a, a proposed uh, timeline of getting that up and running to get it on the uh, November uh, ballot language to uh, adopt the uh, ordinance and uh, again placing it on the ballot for November uh, for the election of November but implementation still proposed in uh, January of 2022. Okay, well, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. All right. Well, thank you. I only have one, Mr. Sarah, and that is that we had the presentation from the committee uh, at our last meeting and it sounds like that you're on the same page with the committee? Yes, we believe that, uh, that you know, their strategy and their uh, solution to our alternative revenue is a good one and it fits within our financial strategy as a city. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I would just like to thank you for the information you put together and to just remind citizens that this is, uh, can be nuanced at times. Uh, I'm by no means a tax lawyer, so sometimes this is complicated for us as well as we discuss it. So when you do have questions, please reach out to City Hall and talk to us and ask the questions so that you can get the correct <coughs> information as we're trying to put it out to everybody. I think it's important that going forward we have a good understanding of what this really means, how this really affects our residents, how it affects our city. So if you do have questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you about this so that we can all kind of be on the same page and understand what's going on moving forward. So thank you again for the presentation. Thank you. Anyone? Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda.